say namaste mila namaste it's such an honor to have you here today absolute honor i've had the privilege of knowing you uh, for so many years now actually jab aapko i've seen you as you know in your 20s also actually jab hum adivasi mein women hue the and i always seen you as such a simple personality alongside being so supremely talented and now of course a legend I'm but but it's your very kind no no honestly we uh, we absolutely revel you and it's very kind of you to have accepted to come here today no it is my pleasure honor and i always feel to be associated with ajivasan since i was coming here ji from my early or late teens if i may yes, say yes, just do. out of college ji and uh, i've always felt like i've come to my own people at home wow. i felt so comfortable wow. since and that is still the same, the same feeling, feeling for me so it is always a pleasure to be here and Thank i honestly you. feel that the only thing that has changed is you have actually taken leaps no, and you know when we see you uh, perform it's nothing short of a miracle i would be still understating if i said that you are miraculous on stage and we feel mm-hmm. blessed so with, without much ado i'll start with uh, The podcast. Can you share with us your earliest memories of interacting with the sitar, and what drew you to this instrument? Okay, uh, my earliest memory of the sitar because I started so young. I was about four something. I actually, before I actually picked up, uh, uh, that's what my parents tell me is uh, I used to bang upon the tabla when I was about two and a half, uh, Ooh, okay. three years, and there is a photograph. of uh, uh me trying to imitate my father huh. he's playing on the sitar and i'm trying to imitate the phrases on that the... he would play on the sitar on the tabla which is fine so that was my uh, and that is a mem- not a memory but it's a photograph hmm. which kind of uh, uh puts that space together hmm. i don't remember doing that acha no okay. and uh, eventually from that two and a half three year old i at some point which they say is around four years okay. i started uh, uh, the sitar mm-hmm. of course it was a smaller sitar okay. i don't remember uh, much about the training aspect huh. as a four five year old huh. but what i faintly remember is playing this program at pondicherry when okay. i was about six years old acha okay. and uh, uh, there are photographs which kind of uh, relate to what little memory i have hmm. and uh, the audience was a bunch of young kids as well Achha. at the uh, ashram in pondicherry okay. mothers uh, ashram school huh. and uh, i played I, i don't know if i had played kafi or a dhun i'm not sure but uh, i do remember uh, someone giving me a 100 rupee nazar that i remember for some reason maybe uh, uh, for the wrong reasons that <laughs> why do you remember about the money and nothing else <laughs> but uh, it was very straight i remember that because it's very odd it felt very odd nobody had done that before so maybe that's why i remember that and uh, i guess uh, uh, 100 rupees meant something of course and uh, of course. Uh, it was immediately taken off me so i guess but i remember that and uh, playing the music what i kind of remember if you ask me my first memory which is something that i remember myself is playing for uh, there used to be a program called santa kukri on dudesh oh, yes i remember that. so yes. playing for santa kukri is what i distinctly remember i was 7 7 years old 7 years old, years old. Seven, eight years old. okay yeah. so that's what i kind of remember for sure i right. can relate to that right yeah. so just your dad playing the sitar yeah. uh, was merely the reason that you... so yeah so uh, yeah to complete your next part of the question hmm. what drew me to the sitar hmm. uh even before i realized what uh i like doing or what i would you know enjoy doing i was already playing the sitar so you know as a kid your sensibilities of uh, uh, likes and dislikes are also is i mean of course the basic like of a 5 6 year old is to go out and play with friends and run around and so that 
still stayed. Okay. But I guess uh, as a if I, if I if I may say like not a hobby, mm-hmm. but as something which uh, whether I like playing sitar mm-hmm. or don't like. Uh, I don't think that question ever came mm-hmm. across. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was a very natural process okay. that at home it was there. I was playing the sitar, huh. and everything related to even the baat or the talk okay. see, was music related. Okay. Okay. People who came also were music related. Okay. People who uh, you know the my relatives' extended family were also music related. Okay. So somewhere the music uh, was always connected. Even if you were doing mundane things, hmm. the music was always there. So I never realized that अरे ये ये profession बन सकता है या ये करना है। तो I was already doing that, and of course I was studying hmm. school and college and this. Okay. And there was always a, a thing with my mother always saying that you have to do this hmm. and this academically, hmm. like all mothers do, I guess. Right. So वो रहता है कि up to a certain age when they give up. I mean, in today's uh, wa- uh, way of looking at life, uh, you will say you had a violent father, but <laughs> no, like, uh, but uh, for us it was you know like you know to be uh, kind of uh, get slapped and beaten to mm-hmm. actually forced to sit down for years mm-hmm. was something which was a little bit of a normal regimental thing. I'm so you happy know? to be there. I don't know if in today's time I would do that with my next generation. Yes. Will I be able to do that? Yes. Whether they will accept that? It's a question, which is uh, uh, I don't know. It depends from uh, hmm. person to person, each one. Hmm. But uh, I was definitely, you know, if there was, a, I, I, I was in fear of my uh, father, wow. my guru, hmm. as to uh, whether if I did not. Play a certain thing the way he wanted, mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. and uh, I guess all that. Uh, when you look back, mm-hmm. it ah. seems that okay, it was to train you, to make you understand, and teach you. But at that point, I probably would have felt like you know, uh, why am I, mm-hmm. you know, doing this? Mm-hmm. But uh, it never crossed my mind then also that okay, I don't want to do this. No, no. So it's not that you know why am I doing this is because why am I being beaten? Huh. Maybe that That's must it. have crossed. Must have. Why am I being you know huh. challenged and forced? Yes. But I guess that uh, challenge and force uh, was part of the training that you have to you know up the ante each time. Yes. You know? nice. So if you are playing a certain tan at a certain pace, right. then the diffi- you have to play another tan at that same pace, or you have to increase the pace pace to play a certain. So yeah, it was always like you know Murder. there is something yes. more to do. Yes. There was always something uh, you know if you felt that ha ye hath me baj raha hai. No, no, abhi is kab abhi abhi baj raha hai. You know another. Ha, another step. So it was a little bit like you know oh my god you know like yeah. that feeling could have been there. Right. But to be honest, I don't remember you know uh, being. Uh, uh, Not interested, or of course I was uh, scared mm. that you know I would avoid mm. those situations. Mm. And uh, but my father, being the trainer that he is, mm. he actually uh, I used to play with his students also, Achha. his senior students. So uh, whenever like a, as a ten year old, I'm playing with his senior students. Now mm. of course they are playing mm. much better mm. and. Mm. They have learned for many more years, and uh, their hands are reaching the sitar. <laughs> My hands are still not <laughs> reaching, uh, and all that. But uh, it, when I look back, I think the reason for that was so that I kind of grow faster right. than the usual. Because if I was playing with kids right. of my age, right. then maybe I my playing would have. Uh, 
seemed very good. But because I was playing with people who were playing better than me as a senior students. And uh, yeah, I had to know. This is, and I have to admit, I'm getting more than I could ask for <laughs> because I didn't expect this. It's it's going so well with uh, the system and the culture that we follow here. And Correct. I remember when we were always saying that why do you have to Correct. Them, yeah. So yeah. This is absolutely in line with Correct. our course thinking. Really appreciate. Probably, that. but it is, but uh, uh, not always. Not, not always. always. Mm-hmm. And uh, because sometimes you have to first learn certain things, hmm. which are I would say the uh, rudimentary riyaz hmm. routine, which hmm. as a kid you have to play. And another important thing which my father, uh, uh, you know, always insist upon, because sitar is a uh, instrument that has to be uh, played hmm. as a physicality. There's a physicality involved in it. So, if you put a big sitar in the hand of a child, automatically the physicality is not in sync. Mm. So, you need to have that physicality mm. of the size mm. and the instrument and the size of the person playing mm. Mm. in sync for it to happen. Right. right. So, only especially Bandai. Yes, I, used, I had uh, two stages of sitars changed okay. before I actually played my okay. final sitar. Perfect. <laughs> So, uh, moving on to the next question is, Ji. could you describe a typical day in your childhood growing up in a household steeped in musical traditions and legacy? What was your day like in terms of, uh, you know, you had your, was it the usual routine? Ki subhi utke, jaldi utke riyaz karate the? Nay, actually, uh, uh, mera jo routine tha, it was to find time between my education, Haan. which was the formal education, the school ka time. Haan. The school was quarter to nine so there was no way I would wake up at five I, I, my, I did not do that we came at five and practicing for two hours okay. Okay. I didn't do that okay. and uh, uh, and uh, I school say uh, and we had a very long school hours I used to come back home around 4 30 so from that 8 8 30 to about 4, 4 30 was school. Now, after that was time which mm-hmm. was uh, in that you had to do your whatever homework or studies mm-hmm. that needs to be done for you to uh, go to school the next day. To my uh, inherent love for sports, huh? outdoor activities, yeah, to learning music, Gee. to doing some time with the family yeah. or whatever is there. So, everything had to be done between that 4.30 mm-hmm. but till the time I went to sleep which I guess would have been around 10 or something okay. I don't know okay. exactly what time I used to move. but uh, I guess so 10-11 mm-hmm. so everything was around that okay. so regi- regimental wise riyaz I did not have a fixed time mm-hmm. and uh, but I remember our school mein, uh, Thursdays used to be a holiday Achha. So we had Sunday and Thursday's holiday. Okay. Saturday was a half day. Achha. So Thursday ka routine mein aapko bata Achha, so because it's a holiday. Achha. So uh, Thursday in the morning there used to be some musicians, Achha. friends of my father's, Achha. who were very regular, Achha. who would come. Achha. So Thursday in the morning at a certain time, at a certain sofa in the house they would sit Achha. I remember this wo aate the aur ek hi jagah pe wohi jagah pe unko baithna unka chai peena unka khana na so this thursday ritual thursday ritual Achha. and uh, around <laughs> around lunch time another individual would come Achha. and wo music ki sab baat chit baat chit thi and uh, around 4 o'clock i had uh, this gentleman yusuf khan saab karte wo tabla bajate the so, वो आते थे मेरे को रियाज करवा ठीक है and 4:30 was when my friends used to go down to play so I could hear my friends playing and 4 o'clock the Yusuf Khaza has come so now I have to play so that 4 to 6 6:30 or whatever seven maybe two two and a half hours that was something which was a fixed thing that I had to do. Uh, do and whenever if, when my father was not available, if he was not available, I still had to do it because my mother was taking care of it. And just they were hated him. 
वो तालीम भी उसी दिन ज्यादा था बिकॉज वो मैं बजाता था एंड ही वुड सेट एंड राइट इन पार्ट व्हाटएवर ही हैड टू राइट तो उस थर्सडे वाज आई वुड से बे खेल को छुट्टी खेल को भी छुट्टी स्कूल के साथ खेल को बट इट वाज नॉट लाइक मतलब ऐसे जो मैंने स्टोरीज जो हमने बड़े बुजुर्ग कलाकारों का सुना जो आठ आठ दस दस घंटे ये मैंने नहीं किया तो आई आई I wonder how that would have been. Right, right. It's it's on our list of questions actually. So you almost covered it for me. <laughs> so um, your father, Pandit Kanti Kumar ji, is a legendary guitarist. So what are the three most valuable lessons you learned from him, both as a musician and as a person? It's very interesting you say that. If yeah. you had asked me this earlier, I might be all over the place to answer it. Mm-hmm. So he actually gave. Uh, he was giving a lecture somewhere, mm-hmm. and then. Um, he came home and he said there are three words mm. one is i might forget the order mm. it is devotion mm. honesty mm. and sincerity okay mm. so these three words the order can change between mm. first is honesty then mm. sincerity and then okay. devotion mm. but these three words are something which uh, he says ye uh, ye bhavna agar aap mein instill ho sakti hai through music or towards music uh, through music or towards music very nice it uh, it will be something which you have to maintain mm. so you have to be honest towards the craft ji you have to be sincere enough to uh, learn and practice that craft mm. and that is only possible if you have devotion towards it ji so i think uh, it, this is if i have to say the three these are the three in fact they are exactly three so three lessons yeah. so they are probably the yeah. pivotal lessons that you got from him and you been this is much uh, i mean this is just few years back so i mean वो ऐसे कभी बोल रहे थे ऐसे कभी बातचीत में तो फिर वो क्या होता है कभी कभी यू नो यू से अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स एंड व्हेन यू आर स्पीकिंग इवन योर थॉट्स गेट क्लैरिफाइड एक्चुअली ये होता है Even so even when when you're you're giving an interview or taking you an right. interview, taking yes. your thoughts clarify. Yes, yes, you're so right actually. So, so right. Uh, But I'm sure जो भी होगा they were extremely honest matlab jo uh, they were brutally honest they were brutally honest yeah. 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 to wo jo honesty can only happen Jee. their honesty or their devotion towards their guru ji would reflect in their music correct kya baat their devotion and sincerity towards the instrument Jee. would reflect in their true music true. so they their life was about yeah, you live the you music, do live the music through the honest practices. devoted sincere true, true true you're so right actually it's a way of life and music yeah. is a re- reflection of your personality and both Correct. obviously uh, uh, impact each other totally and that's only when you're true totally. true musician you are right so right could you please share with us your mother's role in shaping you into the musician oh, actually i'm so happy you asked me this because uh, we all speak because being our uh, you know children sons of Haan. fathers who Haan. have been Haan. Haan. the mother is Haan. role is a little bit i would say never spoken about which is i think my mother is uh, the most important uh, kadi if i may say in the whole scheme of things because uh, not that she had to uh, you know take care of my father and his life and his music she had to also take care of me because i was another musician or a son in the making and uh, all put together and we are little our uh, personalities are little different but her uh, role in maintaining the equilibrium if i may say is um, uh, it is I would I don't have a word to say to uh, describe that, but I can only say that it is the rarest of them. Mm. That kind of uh, you know role that she still plays, mm. and uh, it seems like ha huh, ye uh, on the outside it might not seem to an outsider mm. that she has a role to play mm. in the music, but 
she had a very big role she in, in the forming of the music mm-hmm. as well. Because I remember one thing which uh, this I will never forget. Uh, we Bengalis we worship uh, Durga Mata. So for us Durga festival, Durga Pratima is you know is. वहाँ पे उस दिन उस फेस्टिविटी में हम लोग को नए कपड़े भी मिलते हैं आप बाहर घूमने भी जाते हैं दुर्गा माँ का जो उनके अभी दस हाथों में एक एक अस्त्र शस्त्र उनको दिया गया so she had told me you know your music should be like this mm-hmm. where you have the speciality mm-hmm. of each one's best yeah. astra or shastra in yeah. music which you like yeah. in your hands yeah. to play music right, right, right. so agar in ye ye kalakar ka ye speciality hai to ye you see if you can adopt that yeah. ye kalakar ka ye special so uh, i think that is exactly what uh, assimilation uh, i you know i have always been trying to do i'm still trying to do and that is exactly what signifies what our role in uh, forming the music is jinka jo acha laga jo suna jo best hai jo appeal kiya hai wo of course unke jaisa to ho nahi sakta hai kyunki wo unka you know journey hai but uska reflection aapke andar uska agar wo dikhe aur aapke zariye dikhe aapke tarike se dikhe that's good enough i guess perfect so, it's so this is uh, my mother's uh, uh, you know way of thinking so my mother's role is uh, pivot huge and as a person also when you see her you can tell that she is a very strong woman she is she is extremely strong woman she is uh, much more stronger than she comes across as a person mm-hmm. and uh, uh, very very determined and uh, very clear if i may say you know mm-hmm. you can be strong but if you're not clear so, yeah. then you you will just remain strong right. she is very she's very clear about how things should be Okay, so coming to the next question, the zitar, your innovative creation has been hailed as a game changer in the world of music. Could you tell us what inspired you to invent this instrument? Well, uh, actually, you really don't invent anything. That's my firm opinion. You, uh, Pandit Jasraji used to say a very beautiful line that he said, "Man, he researched it." रिसर्च मतलब वो ऑलरेडी कहीं पे है एंड वो पुरानी हो जाने के कारण वो धूल मिट्टी और वो पीछे हट गया दिख नहीं रहा है सो यू बेसिकली जस्ट रिसर्चिंग इट यू नो दैट्स वाज हिज वे ऑफ लुकिंग एट रिसर्च सो आई थिंक इन्वेंट इज अ वेरी बिग वर्ड यू नो इन्वेंट इज I would say if uh, the true inventors who we consider as inventors, mm-hmm. we should ask them, did you actually invent mm-hmm. anything? But what I would say with the zitar is, uh, every musician has a underlying passion mm-hmm. to be heard. मतलब मैं जो बजा रहा हूँ ये लोगों को सुनाएंगे या मैं जो गा रहा हूँ ये लोगों तक ये पैशन है ऑफ म्यूजिक बिकॉज इट हैज टू कम्युनिकेट मैं बजा रहा हूं मेरे खुद की खुशी के लिए बजा रहा हूं वो अलग स्टोरी है बट एज अ म्यूजिशियन योर फर्स्ट आउटलुक इज वट एवर यू लर्न और यूर प्रैक्टिसिंग इट्स परफॉर्मिंग आर्ट्स सो योर सिंगिंग और प्लेइंग यू वुड वॉन्ट टू रीच पीपल सो दैट इज द बेसिक थिंग वेन आई was growing up in mumbai as you know very much yes. mumbai is not a very classical music friendly place we have many distractions yes. and other attractions yes yes so i used to uh, growing up uh, i was exposed to all forms of music outside except classical music ghar mein classical music hum log ghar festivals mein jaate the music festivals mein to wahan classical 
लेकिन बाय द टाइम आई वाज ग्रोइंग अप इन कॉलेज एंड माय फ्रेंड्स सर्कल एंड व्हाट काइंड ऑफ म्यूजिक दे वर लिसनिंग टू इट वाज न्यू म्यूजिक व्हिच वाज आई वाज नॉट एक्सपोज्ड टू एंड दैट मेड मी लिटिल बिट थिंक अच्छा दैट यू नो व्हाई आर दीस पीपल सो फॉन्ड ऑफ दिस म्यूजिक अच्छा ओके आई गेट व्हाट इज इट दैट इज यू नो नॉट दैट दे are musicians themselves mm. so they understand the chord changes mm. or they understand the, they don't even understand the instrument mm. nor do they play an instrument sometimes they don't even understand the lyrics correct but they are very fascinated drawn by this they are drawn to it so my reading was most of them are drawn to the sound and the others are drawn because their peers have been drawn so it's like a herd mentality so because my friends are also going i will also i know also I, i go to a rock concert and you know i will <laughs> dance in a way maybe i don't relate to that so i don't know what's going on mm-hmm. so i used to think that if this is being uh, drawing the attention uh, if i had the means of getting this sound and i could say my poetry kya baat hai okay through that ha sound ha maybe it will be a language that might appeal to them because they are, this is already appealing to them right so ye ek basic thought tha and this was there when i was growing up as a 15 16 17 18 year old you know every time i would meet a musician who was doing something I was very much attracted and interested in knowing how he is doing ah, things ah. and what is the actual science or physics behind it. Okay. And things like that. So, mm-hmm. if I have to answer your question, I think the need, the you know the I would say the earnestness of mind to reach my generation and the generation of musicians and people listeners who are not listening to our music, right. but for them to. understand our music Adams. was the reason why and the zita the seed of the idea was born correct, correct and then there are many other reasons then right. there are many multiple reasons and layers to that and in the same way as when a instrument is made abhi jaise ek thoda sa trend bolie ek aisa cheez chala tha you know many ye instrument banaya instrument banana is one thing Uh, but actually did you make the instrument kyunki mm-hmm. aap kuch taaron ko idhar se udhar kiya yes, kuch taaron ko nikal diya mm-hmm. kuch taaron ko jod diya mm-hmm. kuch shape change kar diya kuch color change kar diya mm-hmm. wo instrument ban gaya mm-hmm. kya wo instrument bana instrument actually music se banta hai kya ab wo instrument se music kya baja raha hai kya baat hai what you play what music you play if that is appealing if that is uh, emotionally connected to people hmm. then that instrument has yes, yes, yes. some uh, significance yes. jo maine ye instrument right. to aaj uh, zitar to kitne log baja rahe hain kitne hmm. log bahut kuch kar rahe hain uske hmm. sath hmm. but the thing is as long as the motive hmm. is clear hmm. whereas uh, jab maine zitar bajana shuru kiya bahut logon ka darr tha jo you will uh, replace the zitar you cannot replace the science of resonance right sitar is the uh, epitome of definition of science of resonance kya baat hai kya baat hai wo science ko aap kaise replace kar sakte ha aap sitar will take you to a place right. where you will resonate with a certain kind of audience right. certain different section of an audience right. which doesn't resonate with this with this exactly but this will have its audience anyway this will have its audience anyway which uh, in uh, most people's opinion it's dwindling by the day but i don't think so i i beg to uh, disagree that uh, it's not dwindling it's only that the other population is increasing right right, right. so that is the little story very nice extremely nice uh, can you can you describe your creative process when composing new music or adapting existing pieces for the sitar this is uh, a little difficult to uh, say if there is a process to it uh, i think uh, 
द फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट देर इज नो प्रोसेस दैट मैं ये करने से कुछ क्रिएट कर पाऊंगा दैट देर प्रोसेस इज नॉट देर समटाइम्स यू हियर समथिंग एंड यू आर इंस्पायर्ड टू डू समथिंग यू आप कुछ साउंड सुनते हैं कुछ मेलोडी सुनते हैं कुछ फॉर्म सुनते हैं and you uh, you are uh, you know you would try to fit in to your grammar right. to the sound you know right. to this music you are comfortable with right. and you find a new meaning to it right. sometimes uh, uh, you are already you know this music mm-hmm. it is right in your front of your face mm-hmm. but you have ignored it all this while mm-hmm. and then you realize are ye to already hai mm-hmm. to it already fit ho raha hai in this scheme of right, things right right okay okay it already fit it's in already the scheme fit in the scheme of things so i think the process of uh, you know composing or creating music uh, the basic process is that you don't follow a one process the ye ye karne se ye aayega so you have to be open and jaise mere baba ne dekho ek baar kaha your first guru is your ears and your eyes so always keep it open you will learn and be inspired and you will be able to create super super and that's exactly what you did and he added one more thing which abhi bata raha tha he said but keep your mouth closed <laughs> but i have to mouth closed and ke tum bhi kaam nahi karta nee nee bhi okay so uh this also i think will be a little tricky but what has been your most memorable performance or collaboration to date and why well uh, it is very so difficult to answer this because uh, you know when you are a performing musician mm-hmm. irrespective of whether you are performing in you know, a small audience or a mm-hmm. huge audience or large hall or small hall mm-hmm. or small venue mm-hmm. you always want to give the best, the best. that you can mm-hmm. and after the performance uh, if you ask was to be your best performance mm-hmm. uh, i i i have never felt that you know that uh, today was something right. i have always come with the feeling oh i wish i had done this right. oh i wish i could do this right. right so that feeling of little not uh, being satisfied mm-hmm. with something mm-hmm. is a feeling that i experience generally after a after a performance where for me for me to experience that oh i was uh, you know today was mm-hmm. so amazing mm-hmm. but what happens is over a period of time when you're performing and mm-hmm. performing you look at periods mm-hmm. not one performance ah, as ah, such ah, that phase of that phase of your life yes yes you know you look at a certain phase of your life that ha ye phase hai right. ye phase tha ye right. phase tha so when i look back uh i think uh, the phase when i was playing with my father hmm. was the best phase yeah yeah you know why hmm. because i really didn't have to worry about anything <laughs> except for whatever little i was you doing when you were contributing because i knew so little hmm. and i had so less to do hmm. i was quite in my comfort hmm. zone so that phase of when i was 7 8 years old mm. till i was 13 14 15 that years old this. i think that was my most comfort oh. phase mm-hmm. but in terms of collaborations have you have collaborated with so many people so is there any particular group person that you know you have other than your solo performances i'm saying in terms of collaborations has there been any i mean collaboration that you you feel like is special or has been you know, the team each team? each each collaboration each uh, uh, project or mm-hmm. each performance that i've had with uh, uh, you know another artist has been a learning experience mm-hmm. i can you know uh, vouch for that that i've always learned something new in with each person that i have yeah. performed just being on stage i have learned something yeah. and actually playing is uh, is another part of the performance but actually just us uh, sangat hmm. unke sangat mein jo collaborator hai hmm. i have learned something correct and hence now if i have to pinpoint this ah, learning this was greater than ah, the other ah, learning ah, it becomes because you are actually learning correct, something correct, correct that's very and i think uh, unfortunately and fortunately both 
this will continue for the rest of yeah. our uh, lives whatever little uh, we have to do in music i think the fact that this uh, uh, aspect that you will always keep running you will always find something uh, a kind of an avenue to you right. know right. and sometimes you will learn not necessarily from the music hmm. but from what happens before the music and after the ah, music ah, 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 ah. okay which teaches you about the music right right Right. Yeah. Now that you put it like that, reference. When you collaborate with a great artist, mm -hmm. you sometimes not necessarily learn on stage, mm -hmm. which you can anyways, which you should. Mm -hmm. But you actually learn from how he was before going on stage and what is he after. That teaches you about the music. Yeah. Very interesting. It is so interesting, very, actually. Yeah, yeah. Very, very different way of looking at it. And yeah. And I think that. Uh, इस वेर जैसे हमारे इंडियन क्लासिकल ट्रेडिशन में बोलते हैं ना जो माहौल जो सराउंडिंग जो संगत व्हाट इस दैट माहौल सराउंडिंग इट इस बेसिकली व्हाट यू आर डूइंग बिफोर द म्यूजिक एंड व्हाट यू आर डूइंग आफ्टर द म्यूजिक एंड दैट्स वेर क्रिएट्स द म्यूजिक राइट आई आई टेल यू टू � uh, you should really ask this question to a legend. I, I, knew you would I say know. That. I mean, because uh, I'll rephrase because you know sometimes we do wonder. You know certain things that are like what are legends are born. So uh, a part of what you said earlier made me think that you know you you have to have been extraordinary when you were born only. I'll tell you why because you said that childhood me, ऐसा नहीं था मैं स्कूल जाता था before तो बैठने का सवाल ही नहीं था and then शाम को आके खेलना भी था ये भी करना था सो यू नो माय माइंड आई सेड आई काइंड ऑफ गोट माय आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन बिकॉज़ यू नो आई बिकॉज़ इफ यू हैवेंट सी यू डिड मेंशन ट्वेंटीज एंड देन रियलाइजिंग आफ्टर गोइंग आउट इन द वर्ल्ड एंड आई डू पिक्चर यू हैविंग पुट इन अ लॉट ऑफ रियाज एंड ह the fact that you know what you're doing now uh, cannot have happened if you were. No, so I I have to be very honest with you. But okay. you have been so uh, affectionate, kind, loving. It's a blessing what all you say. But I have to be honest. Okay. The word legend huh. Huh. is in today's time. I think is very little bit used yeah, very easy. Yes, it's very really casually. Casual. Yes, and okay. sometimes it is little frivolous that okay. you know. Okay, but this is a legend. This is a legend. Okay. And I. I'm far from that, to be honest, because for me, I uh, we growing up, we have seen really the so-called legends, in a way, and when you see the uh, expanse of their life mm. and the quality of the work that they have done, mm. you feel so minuscule still. Your point is very right. Maybe yeah, you're right about the usage of the word legend and yeah. that it's casual. I'm with you. I'm totally, totally, totally saying that. It is a serious question. Ki was it Riaz? Was it? And I'm just, mm. uh, you know, I'm just reducing it to a very basic question. Ki, mm. Would you say it's hours and hours of Riaz that have brought you to where you are? We won't call it. We won't put a term to it. Anna, so is it hours of Riaz, or was it a combination of talent and Riaz? Was it little more talent, uh, sensibilities, devotion, and the three things that uh, uh, Baba listed? Uh, was it those things and a combination of hard work, talent? Can you, would you be able to? I think, uh, uh, I mean, you actually answered the question in the question in a way with, because I think it's, hmm. it's every, every factor is there hmm. for anything to happen. Hmm. Well, uh, Riyaz is one thing. Now, that word Riyaz is also its meaning change. एक टाइम पे जो हम लोग रियाज बोल के जो सोचते थे, the number of hours and the number of hours now of रियाज have changed. तो मैं बचपन में ने I have heard stories of people practicing fifteen hours, sixteen hours. मैं तो sixteen hours दिन में जाए ही नहीं हूँ. रियाज कहाँ से? तो आप पंद्रह सोलह घंटा रियाज करोगे पहले आपको जागना तो पड़ेगा. तो कैसे ही पॉसिबल है तो अभी मेरे पिताजी बोलते थे स्टोरीज में अरे वो 18 19 घंटे रियाज किए 
अरे लेकिन लोग सोते बोले हाँ तीन चार घंटा सोते थे हम लोग और प्रयास करते तो इट इज लाइक यू नो हाउ इज इट ह्यूमनली पॉसिबल जो आप पंद्रह अठारह घंटा रियाज कर रहे हो तीन चार घंटा रोज सो रहे हो और कितने मैं बोल नहीं वो महीनों तक महीनों सालों तक सालों चल रहा है बोलो इंसान एज अ ह्यूमन बॉडी फिजिकली कैसे होंगे वो तो इधर वो योगी होंगे जो फाइनली वो बन जाते हैं जिनका वो जिक्र करते वो युग योगी है क्योंकि उनको योगी पुरुष ही युग पुरुष ही बोलते हैं जो कलाकार बने हैं तो वो एक टाइप के योगी है सो मे बी दी हैड दिस इन ह्यूमन एक्स्ट्रा टेरेस्ट्रियल पावर दैट दी कुड एक्चुअली डू थिंग्स फॉर फिफ्टीन सिक्सटीन आवर्स आई डोंट हैव दैट बट इफ फॉर यू टू डू समथिंग विच इज कॉल्ड रिया पैशन और लर्निंग अ क्राफ्ट वो आप सोलह सत्रह घंटे एक दिन में महीनों बरसों तक वो कोई महान योगी पुरुष ही कर सकते हैं और ये कलाकार लोग वैसे ही थे तो एंड दैट्स वाई दैट वर्ड लेजेंड द ग्रेट मास्टर्स ऑफ दैट बिकॉज दी डिड दैट वी आर जेनरेशन हैज गॉट इट ईजी इन अ वे बिकॉज ऑफ दैट हार्ड That they did. Mm. Our generation got it a little bit on a platter. हम लोग को तो बनाया बनाया स्टेज मिल गया हम लोग ऑडियंस मिल गया ऑडियंस तो तैयार था सुनने के लिए ये बहुत सच बात है क्योंकि ऑडियंस मैं यमन बजा रहा हूँ या श्री बजा रहा हूँ या दरबारी बजा रहा हूँ ऑडियंस तो है सुनने के लिए तो किसी ने तो ऑडियंस तैयार किया होगा ना जिसकी वजह से किसी ने वो स्टेज तैयार किया किसी ने साउंड सिस्टम लगवाया था उसके इम्प्रूवमेंट तो चलता ही जाएगा तो वो ऑलरेडी चीजें फैक्टर्स किसी ने वो मेहनत की होगी जिसकी वजह से नाउ व्हाट आर वी डूइंग फॉर द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन इज द क्वेश्चन आई थिंक दैट शुड इज अ क्वेश्चन व्हाट हैपन इन द पास्ट वी ऑल कैन सी सी टूडे दैट आई एम डूइंग अ पॉडकास्ट विद यू इज ऑल्सो बिकॉज वॉट हैपन इन दास्ट वॉट आर वी डूइंग टूडे फॉर द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन to feel welcome to feel that oh this is available for us are we doing those are things are we getting help in doing those mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. ye sab valid questions hai i think yeah, which i think uh, in time will get answered True. that uh, what are we le- leaving as a system or as a infrastructure ya platform mm-hmm. for the next generation to feel oh i can do this Correct. पूर्वज लोगों ने जिन्होंने सोलह अठारह घंटा सच में उन्होंने रियाज किया ये अभी मजाक लग रहा है जो अठारह घंटा किया बट एक्चुअली किया होगा ही क्योंकि नहीं तो कैसे हुआ होगा These musicians they were it has to be yes. 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 अगर वो सोचेंगे जो मेरे को भी अठारह घंटा रियाज करना है हाँ, फिर तो समस्या बहुत है बहुत मुश्किल है भाई हाँ, वो मैंने मैंने नहीं किया किसी और ने किया exactly, होगा मैंने तो नहीं so किया सो आई वांट टू गिव कंफर्ट टू ऑल दिस पीपल हु हैव नॉट प्रैक्टिस दैट आई एम विद यू ऑन दैट दैट यू नो इट इज डिफिकल्ट टू डू दैट नॉट 16 18 घंटे बट यस एक रजिम रहे बट म्यूजिक बिकॉज़ ऑफ द ग्रेट मास्टर्स व्हिच हैव दे हैव डेवलप्ड there are certain formulas there are certain mm. things mm. that you need to do mm. today uh, you know in sport mm. to bowl cricket ka everybody talks about so i'll try give you a cricket analogy cricket ka example ha so to bowl mm. at 70 miles per hour mm. in the 50s and 60s mm. was considered wow you mm. know fast bowl mm. Today, a person who is bowling at 100 miles per hour is okay. Is just another fast bowler. Mm-hmm. So we have actually gone through that 30-40 kilometers per hour speed, yes, yes. and it, it's become a human nature. So today's generation, which I think Padma Ji would agree, is very very smart. Yes. They are very very talented. Yes, जो उनको पंद, आ, मैं बोलना नहीं चाह रहा जो बुजुर्गों को शायद पंद्रह दिन लगता था करने में वो आज इन लोगों को पांच घंटा लगता है 
Because when you spend time with something, you will learn more from it. I think this is the only uh, uh, one rule or formula that you can change. That you know, if you you know that you can do this easily, doesn't mean that you don't have to spend time with it. Right. Spend time. Spend time with it because you see, which all has it. Which all has it. Yes. Very nice. Yeah. Very very nice. <laughs> You know, in your opinion, what role does music play in bringing people together and fostering cross-cultural understanding? Uh, I think uh, is there another medium which is better than music I... for this? Where uh, it's beyond language. Yes. If I spoke uh, French and somebody spoke Russian, mm-hmm. if I speak uh, Bengali and you speak Marathi, how will we communicate? Right. Is there any better communication? Yes. uh i think music is the best and the uh, most uh, i would say the most devoted way of actually wanting to mm-hmm. communicate of course i can uh, you can do that through uh, ethnic clothing mm-hmm. through food mm-hmm. through handicrafts mm-hmm. through all that mm-hmm. but the one of the way of saying that uh, i have devotion towards my craft mm-hmm. because i have devotion towards my craft i have devotion towards your craft devotion towards your craft so let me be give it respect yeah. that devotion comes through Beautiful. this uh, yes. uh, music and i think is the probably the only medium where you is beyond language yes universal language it's a universal language right absolutely right with social media playing an increasingly significant role in the music industry how much effort do you put into keeping up with current trends on platforms like this wow that's that's a, a <laughs> question yes it is it is very it's very tiresome <laughs> i have to be honest uh, to be up with the trends of uh, uh, what's trending uh-huh. on social media uh-huh. and uh, but what is good is uh-huh. it trends for a day <laughs> and then there is another trend, another trend. <laughs> And then there is another trend, so that's great because if there was one trend that trended for like months, then you knew that something's you know worth looking at it. Because there are so many new trends, then if you once in a while look at it, also it's fine. You don't miss much because there's another new trend. Right, right. And uh, but what is a little bit uh, concerning, if I may say, is. in the olden days uh, the demarcation for finding a good artist mm. used to be through the music mm. okay used to be through you would hear that person mm. wo kaise ga rahe hai mm. ya kaise baja rahe hai ya kaise dance kar rahe hai ya kaise perform kar rahe hai and they would take a mm. uh, call whether it ah. was a uh, if you if i may say a person who is a impresario or an organizer or a sponsor or a, uh, you know someone who is looking to promote new talent whoever that you know, they hear that person see that person nowadays they see how many followers that person has or how 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 many subscription that person has. that is become and that influences the judgment that he makes towards that person's music that is little concern because that uh, proportion might not be the correct judgment yeah, might not be the correct so it many it may, many cases enough. it is yes. but in very many more cases that judgment is mm-hmm. uh, because you are making a judgment over things that are 1 minute long mm-hmm. that are 3 minutes mm-hmm. long mm-hmm. that are 5 minute long mm-hmm. that is 10 minutes long mm-hmm. or 10 seconds long what happens when that person is in a live environment then what happens, what happens then so that is little something but i think with every new trend comes good things and it's not so good things which get overturned in time very true very true 
Kalitru. What advice would you give to aspiring musicians who hope to pursue a career in the music industry today? Uh, this uh, is such a, a difficult question to answer. Huh. Uh, I think the only thing I could uh, humbly put to them hmm. is if you want to be an aspiring musician, make sure you don't aspire anything else except music. Hmm. If you are aspired for something else mm. through music, mm. oh. then you have you could have a problem. Mm. But if you aspire music, if you want to be a musician because you genuinely and passionately and very sincerely love music mm. and nothing else, mm. then you will be a good musician. You will learn music. You will be practicing music. You will do something because you are happy doing music. music. But if uh, you are Aspiring something that can reach you through music mm. and that's why you need to do music mm. and if you don't by chance get that mm. Then you will blame it on music, on music. Uh, That's uh, that, that can that can be difficult yes. to accept for you that oh, I thought that if I do this I'll reach mm. it mm. Nice. So if you're if you don't have to reach anywhere mm. And which we all know through music there's no way to reach yeah. it's an ongoing process so if you aspire to actually uh, love and passionately want music in your life, mm. you will be the position. You should be the position. So, uh, Nilatriji, what was your uh, reason, inspiration for starting the, the foundation during your academy? Well, uh, I mean, academy is a very big word. I mean, uh, it's, you know, we are too, we are too uh, humble and small to even call ourselves an academy yet. But I think uh, uh, the foundation room, uh, as the name suggests, mm. uh, for any aspiring uh, musician, mm. I feel the foundation has to is yeah. the key mm. for everything. Mm. And uh, if the foundation is good mm. in the in terms of knowledge, mm. in terms of listening, mm. in terms of practice, mm. in terms of ragdari. Mm. In terms of learning, tal, everything is about foundation. So how you approach that? Very true. And uh, uh, you might get a lot of degrees. Mm. You might uh, be, you know, certificated by a lot of different universities. Mm. But finally, when it comes to the performance and the delivery of it, mm. the foundation is what is going to mm. help that you do that. Yes. Not how much knowledge you have mm -hmm. as a theory. Mm -hmm. Practically, mm -hmm. what is the knowledge that you have? Mm -hmm. And practically, the knowledge always grows if the, the foundation if, uh, of learning the foundation is good. Mm -hmm. So even for I see my daughter growing up. Mm -hmm. So uh, my thinking was, if she knows mm -hmm. what are the good values mm -hmm. as far as whether it comes in the human form of human values mm. to music values to etiquette if she understands that then automatically whatever sprouts right. will be through that right. Right. so uh, right. whatever sprouts if the foundation is good right. then whatever will come out will be of some value yes. hence the name the foundation group mm. and uh, uh, that was the basic uh, idea and Baba actually, uh, we started it in his name, it's the Pandit Kartikuma Foundation and he gave us uh, a, a line mm. which is our mantra mm. in the foundation. He said, serve through music. Okay. So you have to serve through music. It's not uh, really uh, any other reason for creating that place but it is actually if we can serve mm. come in service Perfect. of uh, the students right. come in service of the listeners yes so if we can serve through yes. the only thing that we can is music mm. yeah. so these are these two things and uh, let's see where it goes i'm sure you go long <laughs> i'm sure the intent is right yeah. uh, i think that is 
like you, you rightly said, the foundation. And in yeah. this case, the intent is your foundation. Yeah. Primarily. And so, if that is in place, I think everything else. Yeah, follows. everything. Because there's so many people which I'm sure you've experienced more than anybody. They start, they're very interested, and then they fall out. Mm-hmm. And that will happen. Ji. But if their foundation is good, Agreed. even if they fall out, they will, in, within days and within yes. weeks, they are back and they have it. The value there. system is strong. Yes, yeah. true. That's that's the least we can give. And Baba yeah. was very right about serving through music. I think. That no, is that is that is a, these these kind of uh, sentiments. You know, only yes. uh, people like uh, with that kind of life that he has led, Ji. they can. You know. Uh, so right now, uh, for us, we are serving everything. Hmm. Thinking of serving everything through uh, other things. Ah. But uh, when Baba said no, it is serve through, through music. music. Yes, serve through music. That's my takeaway for today, especially. Thank uh, you. Thank you for your time. No, it is. Thank you. It's invaluable. Let it be my thank you today. Next time is yours. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much.